Okay, hey, um, have you heard about this Rainchi? Rainichi? Rainch? Anyways, she's amazing. I feel like Indonesia's Indonesian artists' music, except like they're so good. She's so good. Um, anyways, okay. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you again. For our yeah, oh my gosh, next week is gonna be the last week. Um oh, let me just cry. A tear, a single tear, a soft tear. But anyways, um, Hi, nice to see you again, even though I'm seeing you through YouTube and not live, but whatever. It's great to see you. Uh, yeah, I am very stoked because we get to get into the fun stuff today. And the fun stuff we are getting to talk about is, of course, Microsoft Excel. So I will say a first Akapakar, sh shoot, Apakabar to you. Um, hello. So today we are talking about Microsoft Excel, and we're going to go through some of the basics. We're going to talk about the sheets and the workbook, of course, cells, rows and columns. And then we go into data, data, data. And yeah, filtering the data, we're, I'll show you a little bit of formulas because formulas are super fun. And then we get to the pivot tables. And of course, the pivot tables, this is what I want to see in your assignment. Anyways, okay, back to basics. Um, a Microsoft Excel file technically called a workbook and in these workbooks you have all these wonderful sheets of data so this could store you know data data in sheet one goes here and then in sheet two you have some more actually these would be more numbers and blah 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 blah, blah. so amazing right sheets store different datas and there are different sheets in your workbook now further getting into it Let's talk about cells. Let's talk about cells, baby. Uh, each one of these little boxes in Microsoft Excel is called a cell, and you can put whatever you want in these cells. So cells can be headers. So, you know, your total K-pop <laughs> tracks I listened to. And then over here, I could say the date. So the date today, October 6th, I listened to 56 K-pop tracks. Dang, dang, dang. October 7th, 45. And of course we can do whatever we want here. We can, you know, um, copy it, we can paste. And what's even really cool about um, Microsoft Excel is that it starts to kind of figure out the type of information that you're putting into your cells. So let's take a small example. Let's say that we want to have a full date of October for all the K-pop tracks that we listen to. Um, so you see, once you've highlighted these two cells, there's this little green box and we can pull down and then it just auto populates. So we can put all of October here. See, and then it goes November. How cool is that? Very cool. That's what I'm saying. That's what you're saying. It is very cool. How do we say this is very cool in Indonesian? Luar biasa keren. Exactly. So we have numbers, we have letters, we have all this fun stuff. This is contained in a row. So all of our cells that go across the same line, this is a row. And all of these cells that um, congregate vertically are called a column. We also have some customization options if you want to make your cells a little bit fancy. Let's say that we want the date to specifically pop out. We can always go ahead and bold and bold. Wow, amazing. When it comes to rows and when it comes to columns, we can adjust the size of them. Whoa, whoa, amazing. We can even just right click and go to column width. We have a particular width in mind. Another cool thing is that we can highlight multiple columns and we can do the same thing. If we want columns to be all the same width, which looks nice, we can do that too. So we want all these columns from I to N to be the width of 20. Bam, amazing. You can do the same with rows. Whoa, great, right? Great. Now also too, you have these alignment options so we can make it centered in the middle even cooler and then this is one of my favorite features this is something called wrap text if you have too much text in your cell you can click wrap text and look at this now lastly we can also put some borders here and that makes our data more presentable i'm excited um cells not only can have text or numbers put into them but also a formula and maybe just to jump ahead because I'm excited formulas are super cool so let's say how many k-pop tracks 
did I listen to in total? Well, we can go to this formula bar up here, click auto sum, and then you will see that um, it will plug in equal sign sum and then the cell J8 to cell J12. Of course, we didn't listen to any K-pop um, for these, so nothing will be counted. That's fair. So you can see in total, I listened to 101 K-pop tracks. Let's say that I go to tomorrow and I project that I'm going to listen to 56 K-pop tracks just like yesterday. It auto updates. How cool is that? You can also plug in formulas manually. If you put down the equal sign, this will signal to Excel that you want to do a formula. So let's say, let's do the average number of K-pop tracks. So we type equal sign and then we can write an average and then number one, comma, comma separates the cells. Um, it uh, signals to, to Microsoft Excel that you're gonna be clicking another cell or another, another data point, cell and cell. So in total over the three days, I listened to around 52 K-pop tracks. Now, moving on, we talked about these things. Let's get into the data, the data, the data. Let's talk about COVID. I'm particularly interested in COVID data in Indonesia, and I don't necessarily have an angle at the moment, so I'm just gonna dig around into the data and just see what pops out. I went to, and I'll post this link if you wanna follow along. I went to the ourworldindata.org slash coronavirus data. It's updated all the time, which is amazing. We wanna download either the Excel file, file or the CSV file of course so let's go ahead and download that okay <laughs> oh this is a lot <laughs> there's so much data i love it oh my gosh <laughs> wow okay so there's a lot of information points let's look at the headers here so the in the first row this is usually where we're gonna find our headers so the information so we have the iso code so this is like the country code the continent that's cool location date maybe we want to just move this a little bit total cases new cases cases smoothed female smokers ah interesting i think i know my angle um hospital beds life expectancy human development index okay 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 cool i want to take a look at uh smoking warning back up your data one of the things that i really recommend you to do is when you have like something like this nightmare of numbers um it's always good just to save like the just keep it in its original form and then play around with it later um and sometimes when you play around you might make some mistakes you might delete us you know a bunch of stuff that you can't undo so i always always recommend just to keep this raw data alive now another cool thing about sheets is of course we can rename the sheet so let's rename the sheet that you've just downloaded i'm just gonna put it at the very start raw and that knows that we are not gonna touch it. I can either, I can maybe even color code it because that's cute. I'm gonna do a purple, fabulous color. Now let's copy this sheet. Let's just make a duplicate of it. So what we do here is we right click and then we go to move slash copy, create a copy and let's place it here, bam. And let's call it just um, country smokers. So. Hopefully this will give me some interesting stuff. So I'm again going to delete some. I, I want to focus on the countries, not necessarily the continents. Um, I could leave it in here. I could maybe leave content in actually. Uh, date, yes, cases, new cases, cases smooth. No, I don't want this. Total. Um, oh, A part of the data cleansing is to really just kind of, yeah. Do we need to polish up any of this information? No, not really don't be lazy rob just do it um if we want to we can be fancy and just put in like total cases so that looks better than like that so new cases total deaths this will just polish it up when we put um when we present the information if we want to visualize it um or if we're going to be putting it in a uh, pivot table have some of our smoothie and let's keep going. So to shrink myself back down, it is pivot table time. And this is important for your assignment. 
Do 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 do. Shrink a mess off down. Ha. Okay, so now we have all of this more concise data in front of us, and hopefully, we're thinking, oh, this is a little bit easier to to comprehend. We can also make let's make all of these columns the same size. So let's go with column width. And, Play around for 12 or something. Okay. 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 This is this is starting to like look and feel better. Let's go again and use this wrap text that we learned about the other day. The other day. Ten minutes ago. Wrap text. And then center it. Hey. Hello. Okay. Ah. Cool. Okay. Now oh, this feels a lot better and easier to read. Of course, I'm going to bold it and I'm just going to put a nice little um, thing here. This is okay. Awesome. I feel a lot more comfortable with this. Now it is time to make the pivot table. So go ahead and click on the insert tab up here. And then let's click pivot table that summarizes your complex data and easily arranges it. Oh, it's so cool. So let's go ahead and click and then select your data. Now, please, please, please. If your pivot table is not working out, um, it's because you didn't highlight the header. So one of the most important things that you have to do is to make sure that, you know, all of these headers that have just been, um, we've just fancified, these need to be selective. It is imperative that these are selected. So let's go ahead and go all the way down and then click to the last cell of our data. And that is cell N 48,595. Okay, cool. Now you can put this in an existing worksheet. This is handy dandy. Um, let's put it in a new worksheet just to, this will reduce the clutter. And I think also too for your assignment, it will be easy if you just have two sheets, um, two new worksheets where your pivot tables are added. So let's go ahead and press okay. Now the fun begins. Um, I'm gonna insert a column because I want to see the pivot table a little bit closer to my face. Now, of course, I want to look at smoking rates for different countries and see which um, which countries have the highest smoking rates. So here you'll see we can add specific filters. We can specify different columns of data. We can specify different rows of data. And of course, we can put in the numbers in our value. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to location. And let's put that as a row. Cool. Now all the countries pop up. Now let's put in the percentage of male smokers. Now something is interesting that will pop up. Um, when we put this in, we will be a bit surprised and confused. And this depends on what you are, um, what sort of values that you're looking for. So let's plop it in. And when we look, this does not make sense. There is uh -huh. 10, almost 11,000% of people in Albania, males smoke. That doesn't make sense at all. And when we look at the values, we'll see that this is now the sum of male smokers. And of course we don't want the sum. This is information that we can't use. So all that you have to do is just click on this little down arrow and go to your field settings. Click on this and then look, you have a bunch of fun stuff. And we're only gonna focus on the sum and the average that we learned about earlier. So like the sum of K-pop songs that we listen to or the average number of K-pop songs that we listen to. Let's click on this average and this will give us information that is a lot more helpful and a lot more useful. Now, a sum might be interesting. Let's say, let's take this off so we can either just unclick it here or um, we can move it away, handy dandy. This is, a sum is something interesting for something like new cases. If we want a sum of new cases, this is interesting because it means like all of the cases in general. Now, we have some missing columns and missing information. And this is okay. But what we want to do is we want to look at and see, okay, but what countries have the highest rates of smoking? So just click this down arrow and let's go to more sort options. And then let's do it uh, descending. And instead of focusing on location, let's change it to average of male smokers. Let's press OK. Holy crap. Indonesia, you guys. You guys are heavy smokers. 
Wow. That's incredible, actually. Holy crud. I mean, of course, there's a lot of, like, country data that's missing, like Sudan, Chad, etc. Like, Aruba. The rates might be higher, but of, of the gathered information, you guys are the, the second highest smokers in the world. That's wild. Okay, let's add female smokers into the mix now. So let's go ahead and add values here. Of course, again, we don't want to sum of female smokers. Like, 700% of women in Indonesia smoking or just smoking like five cigarettes at a time. Okay, let's go to field value settings and let's again change it to average. Looks like that's super interesting. So a lot of men smoke in Indonesia, but not a lot of women. I wish that they did COVID cases by gender because it would be so interesting now to see in Indonesia the amount of cases or the amount of people that have unfortunately passed away in Indonesia from COVID and seeing if there's any sort of like linkage between the rates of smoking between male and female and COVID deaths. Anyways, you guys, we can now sort. We can add more additional um, things into our pivot table just to kind of search around. For example, we can add continents here. So automatically the pivot table has now categorized all of the countries into um, continents. So you see Africa here. And then in the sub labels, we see the countries. Let's just pop it down. Ha, ha, ha. Huh, huh. You'll also see sometimes that we might need to fix, like there's a million decimals here. This looks really ugly. So let's go ahead in our home tab and just reduce the amount of decimal places. Huh, 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 that looks better. But if you want to dig further, deeper into the data, you can start making actually your own exploratory fields and cells. So for example, let's say that we want to look at um, cases per population and see who has the most cases per population. We can just put in a new formula, which you learned earlier, um, and let's just divide something. So let's go to the equal sign and then um, let's look at the total of uh, cases divided by the country's population. So this will give me this very small number. And then what I'm going to do is we'll copy and paste the formula that you put in so cool i love this program ah it's amazing and you can just pull it all the way down this will take a long time you can also double click this little green box right here Ta -da. and it should populate automatically for you okay sorry as i'm digging around one last thing that i find interesting of course is to put on the filter so of course you can filter some of the data um, into your in your pivot tables. So for example, let's take a look at just specifically now the average new cases per population and let's just look at it only um, for the recent months. So let's go ahead and put date in the filter area. And let's yeah, let's take a look at September. Aruba still Israel Bahrain. Yeah, I hope that you've had some key takeaways from this. Um, I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you have um, and also looking forward to any sort of recommendations uh, of music that you have. So let me know and yeah, we'll see each other soon. Okay.